Hello and welcome everyone to Dev with Sev. I'm Sev the Dev, and today we will be starting a brand new series called Let's Create in Unity, where I teach you how to make different types of games using the Unity engine. In this first installment, we will be making a 2D hack and slash side scroller game. The player will control a single character and they will progress their way through different levels by slaying enemies and defeating bosses. We will explore concepts such as character systems, level creation, power-ups and objectives, UI, and much more. Join me as we dive into the various systems that go into a 2D hack and slash game. Let's get started. First, we need to open Unity Hub, select Projects, and then New. I will be using Unity version 2019.2.9 F1. Select the 2D template, name your project, Set the directory, and click Create. I am building this project with free assets from the Unity Asset Store and will provide links in the description. I will also demonstrate how to import these assets from within Unity. Navigate to the Asset Store window, or if you don't have it open, click Window and Asset Store. In this tab, we can click Filter, and scroll down to the 2D Assets, and click Characters, and environments. We also want to make sure we check free assets and then we can view the results. Now this is a whole list of free Unity 2D assets that we can use for this project. I've already picked out two packs so I'm going to go to my assets. It's the free 8-bit pixel pack by Super Icon LTD and the pixel art bandit pack by Sven Thol. I'm going to import them to my project, and if there's anything you don't want to import, you can uncheck them and then click Import. The first thing we're going to do is make a basic platform for our character to walk on. I'm going to use the Crate Sprite from the Pixel Pack we downloaded, but before I do anything I'm going to change the pixels per unit to 32. The reason for this is because all the assets from this pack are 32 by 32 pixels. Now we can go ahead and apply these changes. Now we can drag our Crate Sprite into our scene and zero out the position. We also want to add a Box Collider 2D component to our sprite so we can have collision. Make sure the bounds are surrounding the edges of your sprite. Right click on Assets, Create, Folder, and name it Prefabs. We can go ahead and drag our crate from the scene into the Prefabs folder, and now we have an instance of it that we can edit. Now we can go back into our scene and click on the Crate, and see that the icon has turned blue. Now we can instantiate different versions of this. So let's go ahead and duplicate it a few times, and create an empty game object, and we'll name it Terrain. Let's zero out the position, and parent all the crates to this Terrain object. Now we can take the Terrain, and move it down by, let's say, three units, and go to each crate, and move its x-coordinate so we can arrange it into a platform. Next we are going to make the player character. We can go ahead and right click and create a 2D object sprite. Let's zero out the position, and name it Character. Now we can go ahead and drag this into our Prefabs folder, and open the Prefab. Now on this Prefab we want to add a couple things. We're going to go ahead and add a Capsule Collider 2D, and we're going to add a Rigid Body 2D. 
So the sprite I'm going to use for this character, since you see nothing's rendered here, is the light bandit from the bandit pack we downloaded. Now we see he's really small, but we also have to go here and change the pixels per unit to 32, just like we did the crate, and apply. Go back into our character. Now we want to adjust the capsule collider so it's around our character. So we can click Edit Collider, move this up. Get right about his feet. We'll get a portion of his hand and move the other side of the collider back closer to him. All right, that looks good enough. We also want to click constraints on our rigid body and freeze our Z rotation. Now if we press play, we can see our character fall, and gravity is being applied to him, and he lands on the platform. Now that we have the base of our project set up, we can begin to add logic to our character so that it responds to our input. In the next video, we will set up our character's movement and attacks, as well as create some enemies for them to fight. But that is it for this video. If you have any comments or suggestions about the project, be sure to let me know down below. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.